If you want to learn to fly like this and be a hero, then stay tuned for Dropship Pilot Lesson 2. just saw an example of the skills we're building towards. But before we get there, we need to learn the last part of the landing first. This is going to allow us to come in at full speed and use precision skills to land exactly where we want to. So jump in the verse and follow along as we explore what it means to be a dropship pilot and star citizen. In the comments below, let me know how many times it took for you to perfect these skills. One of the first things we need to do is fix some of the disastrous default settings. So we're gonna go into options. We're gonna go down to flight proximity assist defaults on, and we're going to turn this to no. Then we're gonna to go to flight, space brake engages boost, and we're gonna make sure that this is turned on. Lastly, we're gonna to go to pilot velocity indicator, and we're gonna make sure it says always on. Flying up high so you can spot your landing zone sure makes it easy but it also makes it easy for the enemy to spot you. Flying low reduces the distance you can be seen from and uses terrain in your favor. Even flying low, you're still a target. So getting into the landing zone quickly and precisely is key for survival. In this first demonstration, we are going to use the Cutlass Black at the Shubin Mining Facility. Our landing velocity in this ship is 100 meters per second. We are missing the promised radar altimeter, so we'll have to visually estimate our altitude. For the Shubin Mining Facility, we want to be at 330 meters, but at other landing zones you may not know the altitude, so I suggest using Shubin to practice your visual estimation. I will leave a link in the description below to reference images. Since we don't have any waypoints giving us distance to the landing zone, we will be using a visual reference for when to simultaneously set our engines to idle and engage speed break. The visual reference for when to slow down is when the top of the dash meets the beginning of the landing pad. Your altitude affects the distance your dash lines up with the landing pad and therefore changes the stopping distance. At the Shubin Mining Facility, the closer you are to 330 meters in altitude and 100 meters per second in speed, the more accurate the landing will be. When you don't know the altitude, it is a bit of a feel thing, but you can still use visual estimation to be precise. The goal is to land with the back of the ship within a few meters of the beginning of the landing pad. So here we are coming in for our landing. Note we are at a landing velocity of 100 meters per second, and we're gonna to try to maintain 330 meters in altitude. When our dash lines up with the beginning of the pad, we will quickly put the throttles to zero and engage speed brake. You need to wait until the ship is fully stopped before you strafe down. So a quick tip on getting as many landing practices in as fast as possible is to strafe up and fly backwards far enough away you can speed up to 100 meters per second before the landing pad. Keep practicing until you can consistently land with enough room on the pad for the rear ramp to open and still be on the pad. For combat, consistency is important, but it doesn't have to be perfect. What you need is a toolbox of skills you can use to be effective. In this example, we are using the same skills we just saw on the pad in a real world environment. The only thing that changes is we are lining up the dash with the beginning of the ground vehicle, and well, we want to fly high enough not to crash into the people we are rescuing, and close enough they can load up quickly if things are hot in combat. I switch ships on you to the Valkyrie. And you may have noticed that our landing speed changed to 60 meters per second. Each ship has a different landing speed to land closely to the targeted landing zone. I have made a sheet that we can reference for a few ships, and I ask for your help in submitting information for your favorite ship. I have put links to the reference sheets and submission form in the description below. Visually, the Valkyrie looks a little different, but the altitude is the same. With the landing speed of 60 meters per second, it feels slower, but don't worry. In the next video, we will be coming in at full speed and the challenge will be to get lined up, be at the right altitude and close to the landing speed in time to make a precision landing where you intended. Now let's take a look from what a Marine on the ground would see. And yes, combat happens at night. 
Again, notice that I wait for the ship to completely stop before I strafe down. There is one strange physics problem with this landing technique. If you arrive at the landing pad with your landing gear at the exact same altitude as the landing pad, you will slide and you will be unable to stop, but you can strafe up and boost out of it. I stated before that this technique works for other ships and it also works on other planets. In fact, it even works in space. When entering a hangar, I wait for the dash to cross the blue outline of the landing pad. The same skill we just learned can be used to stop when we have a real-time distance reference to the landing zone. In this case, I use the in-game pip to an org mate. As you see in this diagram, we are transitioning from a visual reference to a break distance at which we set the throttles to zero and engage the speed brake. For the Valkyrie, our brake distance is 125 meters. The meters tick down fast, so you have to anticipate when it will be at 125 meters. This technique could come in handy if you are rescuing people at the base of a hill or if their back is to a building and you don't want to expose your ship to the enemy. We still use the visual estimate, and again, here at Shubin, practice at 330 meters. It is critical to anticipate when the distance will be at 125 meters. As you approach the landing zone, take a peek at the area you intend to land. Ensure that it is clear and the right size for your ship. This is something you can practice with a friend or with a mission box. This technique can be a little bit unnerving as you can't see the person in front of you. You're going to have to trust your skills and that you stopped at the right time. In the next video, I will teach you how to come in at full speed and use two different techniques to slow down and the skills you just learned to make a precision landing where you're needed. Subscribe to this channel for more Star Citizen tips and tricks.